In this video, I'm going to be showing you the oil system for the supercharger. I'm going to be topping it up with oil and bleeding it out. I'm going to be putting the belt on and starting it up. Right, let's get this oil seal in. That should just pop over there. In there. Right, the oil steel, oil seal installing device. It's really deceiving with all these machining marks around it. It's like an optical illusion. But right, that's there, that's in. It looks like there's a bit that's sunk in there, but it's not. That's just that machining mark makes it look like that. Right, apparently it needs a bit of sealer on this bolt because oil can come up with threads. But then surely, what about it? If you want a bit of sealer on that as well, I would have thought. And the surface here. Mind you, that's alloy, so I'll probably tighten up quite, I'll probably seal that quite well. Just get a bit of seal Right, now we need to talk up to 120 newton meters, I believe. Right, so 110 foot pounds. Really difficult with these slippers. My new work boots. Right, so where are we up to? We got that talked up, we got this on, we got the supercharger on, and I've actually put the oil system in. That's the oil in, and that's the oil out. The oil out runs around there runs right around the other side. I'll show you that in a minute. I've got the oil cooler on. You can see that. There, I've had to make a little bracket to make it fit because the one on there wasn't really in the right place. But yeah, the oil comes out of the supercharger, goes around the other side and then goes to the filter, which I've got hidden behind all this lot. And then into the oil cooler, out of the oil cooler, back into the no, that's wrong. It comes out of the supercharger, comes down here through the oil cooler, and then back into the oil tank here. And then this side, it comes out of the oil tank here, goes to the oil filter, which is behind there, I've hidden it behind there. It comes out of the oil filter and goes into the supercharger. Anyway. It's got an oil filter and an oil cooler and a supercharger and the oil tank's actually built in to this casing here. So that's really nice. So I've got my boost hoses trimmed and on. I've just got clearance this a little bit so I can fit my oil cap on. That's the voltage clamp which is just tucked in there for now so that I can adjust it if I need to. And then round here Inside the intercooler, this sexy boost hose here. Boost hose is here, and the dump valve in there all fits rather nice. I've still got to put on the intake and the air filter for the supercharger there. Right, that was all a bit of a nightmare and a fiddle to get all this together in here and looking neat, but I'm glad I've done it this way. 
all the pipes are sort of out of the way of the exhaust and everything and they don't run all over the engine like I've seen a lot of them so it looks really nice. Okay let's get some oil in it and then see if it leaks out anywhere. I don't know how much oil it takes and if I've got enough oil in this bottle to be able to spill some I'm not sure. I don't know where you get this from because it's got no specs written on the bottle so let's get some in there just get a little bit oh it's blue it smells just like ATF probably is but about 10 times the price there's oil up to the up to here now so I'm just going to leave it in there for an hour or so and see if we've got any leaks and let it sort of make its way down to the oil filter I should imagine yeah we'll go down to the oil filter right so I've now topped the oil up that's just at the level there well it's just below the filler there in the case I'm going to um, now I'm going to prime the system so basically it's just a case of actually taking the inlet pipe off and putting the cap on so it's sealed. Oh the cap by the way, it's a really cool little temperature gauge, like that, like that. So now it's just a case of actually blowing air in the breather, put a bit of pipe on there for the breather, and blowing 15 psi of air through it. There you go, I've got oil coming out of the inlet there so now that's filled the oil filter up and that's primed the inlet side. I'm assuming it might prime the... Oh no, because there's a one-way valve in this. That won't prime up here. I'll show you that, actually. Come with me. In there, on that return line, that there, is a little one-way valve which you've got to get in there so that the... The supercharger doesn't suck oil back in when it stops and then when you start it up again it overloads the seals and blows the seals and we don't want that do we all right so now i can put my banjo connection back on this stuff's all quite tricky because everything's tight and i say tight i mean tight for space and it does fit beautifully <laughs> This one's one of the easier ones to get to. The ones on the back of the oil tank are a little bit tricky. Oh, I've just had a look to see how much this oil costs in case I spill it or need some more. And it's 128 US dollars a litre. So I'm gonna be a bit careful with it. And that should now be prime. Well, what I'd like to do is see oil coming out of this end here. So I'm gonna take that off. I want this to squirm me in the face. This could end in disaster actually. I'm not going to put air through it. <laughs> right, so now we can put the belt on. Now I've run it with the belt off and the boost hose off just so I can make sure this seal doesn't leak and this pulley is all okay. So now put this tensioner on. So there's several ways to tension this. The instructions, what few instructions I do actually have, tells you to put two Allen keys in it to adjust it. But what you can do, you can use C-clip pliers, which have got an angle on them. These are probably a little bit small. Adjust that. Or you can just use normal, their C-clip pliers as well. Or normal long nose pliers, or a special tool, which has got two little pegs on it like that in there and, and tensions up or they're my favorite I can hold them all right where's my only key I don't know how tight to do this it doesn't say any instructions in fact I've done most of this without instructions because I don't have hardly any instructions so I don't really know how tight it has to be 
I know with big superchargers you can't have a tight belt because it wears a bearing out, but as far as this one goes, I reckon if I can twist that 90 degrees, that's okay. Now scary bit. Let's see. Oh, hang on, that belt's not on properly. Just notice that's not in the right grooves there. I was hoping I wasn't gonna have to take that right off. Actually, oh, yeah, that pulley it's a lot bigger than it's a lot wider than the pulley they give you in the belt, so you can't, it sort of seems to run. In line there, okay, that looks good. Oh, that washer go, it's a little bit loose, but. That'll probably tighten up when everything warms up. is in the, be in the wrong place. So the oil's gone down, that's a good sign. Got a little leak behind there. It's a fine line between over tightening these banjo bolts and oil leaking. That's the actual return line, so that's a good sign. It means there's oil coming back. Actually, I should be able to see that if I start that up. drip tray here so if anything shoots out or spill anything I don't lose it because <laughs> this is stuff is so dear. I just checked the oil and it's down quite a bit so it's obviously pumping somewhere. tighten the belt a little bit because it's still a little bit flappy but once I've done that Bob's your uncle or maybe he isn't let me know in the comments if you've actually got an uncle called Bob or just comment on anything really it really helps me and I'll get back to you so in the next video I'll be putting a base map on it whether or not I've got hold of one or I've got to make it myself and I'll be riding it for the first time I reckon hopefully got to check it for oil leaks I've got my oil cap on now, so it's all good. So don't forget to like, comment, share, and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, and have a great day.